This is El Salvador. In just 8,100 square miles, you can see the sun rising over the volcano and setting down by the beach on the same day. El Salvador is a land of contradictions, from the busy mercados and bus stops to coffee and sugar cane plantations. It's also one of the most dangerous peacetime nations in the world, and one of the worst countries in Latin America to be a girl. Sexism and machismo make women and children especially vulnerable to violence. This violence is a reflection of generations of trauma. Violence is cyclical. Most victimizers begin as victims, and most victims begin as witnesses. In social toxic environments, children's brain development prioritizes the parts of the brain that process fear and anger to the detriment of the parts involved in reasoning and critical thinking. They adapt to survive, but by doing so, they sacrifice social-emotional skills like empathy, tolerance, and respect. Children who have been victims of violence are more likely to engage in crime and antisocial behavior, developing belief that violence is an appropriate mean of settling conflict. Women are at the brunt of the cyclical violence in El Salvador. They survive the highest levels of sexual, physical, and psychological violence and bear the greatest load of childcare. Contextus works with adults who carry the scars of childhood trauma and the children around them. Women in prison are some of the most marginalized and traumatized of all. Some are guilty of the crimes that were motivated by basic needs to care for their children in the first place. And many give birth and raise their kids behind bars. In the Granja Penitenciaria de Mujeres de Izalco, prison farm for women in Izalco GPMI, 184 children spend their first crucial years of life raised by women with unhealed trauma. Each day in the GPMI, these children are sent to the Child Development Center, CDC. They are cared for by 35 female inmates who volunteer in the CDC. However, they have no training in early childhood development. 80% of inmates in El Salvador have received less than ninth grade education. They rely on parenting base their practices on the way that they were raised or have observed in others. The same parenting that's failing Salvadorian youth, who now turn to gangs or emigration to flee the violence. In La Granja, 100% of the women will soon be released to their homes and communities. Their children will begin school. To break the circle of violence, both need positive spaces to learn, grow, and reflect while in prison. Women need to heal psychological wounds to be better mothers and leaders and children need constant exposure to rich literacy spaces to be successful. Contextus interrupts the cycle of violence for women and children in El Salvador by working in the context where violence is perpetuated. We work with teachers in school so children have safe spaces to express themselves. We work with inmates and prison officers because we believe in consequence but also in compassion. Incarceration should be a time of rehabilitation and reflection that prepares offenders to return to society with pro-social skills to navigate their surroundings. In La Granja, we will work with women like Doris. In her book, Dream Thief, Doris wrote about the violence she experienced growing up, much at the hands of her mother. When strangers came to her mother's hair salon and commented on her looks, her mother replied, You like her? Take her! Doris remembers how she felt at just six years old when they took her away. My heart shrunk to the size of a mustard seed. Fear and anguish took over. At nine years old, she lived on the streets and had already experienced everyday abuse. At 11, she smoked, used makeup, and later had her first boyfriend. He kissed me and touched my skinny body. That scared me and made my stomach hurt. But my friends did it. They let the boys touch them, and the boys fell in love with them. At 13, she had found a family with gangs and was shot for the first time. Despite all of this, she never lost her longing for her mother. When she became a mother herself, she was overcome with the fear that she, like her own mother, 
might become a dream thief. Thanks to DFW, we'll work with women like Doris. They will write and publish their stories, and in doing so, become authors of new identities and new behaviors. They'll also learn the importance of reading with their children, and how books can make them dream givers, not dream thieves. Their children will grow and learn in a beautiful library with books just for them. Their books and stories will not remain behind bars. We'll host reading events to take their story beyond the prisons and into the hands of decision makers. We'll share their books with the world online and in person. Dining with Women helps women like Doris rewrite their stories and give it the ending they want, and write thousands of them with their children.